All right, what up, YouTube? Molly G, back at y'all in the episode of Running With Y'all, No Cap, No Filter. And today I'm going to run with y'all about who cloned Tyrone. Well, they cloned Tyrone. I don't know why I keep getting the title messed up. But yeah, it's the new Jamie Foxx movie that just dropped on Netflix. Everybody talking about it. It's real, got real funny timing where Jamie Foxx will come out to the public and, you know, just show his face and all that right Right when the movie dropped for some promo, like, it's real smart if you ask me. I really think he was sick, but I think he was, you know, fine long before he, you know, came out to the public and gave his promo. So, a lot of people feel like it was probably the jab that made him sick in the first place. I don't know. That's another story for another day. But as far as him being sick, I think he was actually sick, and I don't think it's a clone of him. But, you know, it, it, it was some real good timing for him to just come about the shadows to drop the uh, promo for it you know, in the midst of him telling him about his, uh, telling everyone about his well-being. But anyway, let me go ahead on and get to the movie, They Clone Tyrone. They Clone Tyrone was a good movie to me. I, I really recommend it. A lot of people comparing it to Undercover Brother with a lot of the playoffs with the chicken and the mind control and things of that nature. But I feel like Undercover Brother was way more, uh, unserious than, uh, this movie. Like, Undercover Brother was like a black uh, Austin Powers to me it was like a little bit of get out and a little bit of us to me except it didn't have the the thriller aspect uh, of it as much you know it, it basically had the it was like a sci-fi urban aspect to it you know what I'm saying instead of a sci-fi thriller mystery well it, it did have some mystery it kind of it kind of had some it, it, it was some mystery to you know if you you really felt like uh Fontaine, uh, Jamie Foxx character, the Slick Charles, and the, uh, the one girl, you know, the, the La Ho, you, you really felt like they was like a real uh, gang and they just going to solve a mystery. And I think that's a, not just a gang, but like some 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 urban superheroes, because you know, they, they really, if you really paid attention, like Fontaine had on green, Jamie had on uh, purple, and the whole she had on uh, orange. So it was like all of them had the different colors and like a different suit or some shit going on. But the cinema, the cinema, cinema, cinemagraphy, well, y'all know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> the shots and the, the way the movie looked was real good. I like I like when movies look like that. Like I said, it had a Jordan Peele uh, feel to it, you know. Fuck. I feel like if Jordan Peele did a, 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 a us, but it was like in the hood, It'll be this movie right here. That's what I feel like. <laughs> but, um, yeah, let's get to the movie, though. Like, the beginning of the movie, you see the white man looking down on him, and it just shows, like, a message of, you know, the white man is just watching us even when we don't think he is. You know, hence what's going on with the phones nowadays. Hence what's going on with all the cameras nowadays. You know, it just uh, a lot of shit where we think we're not being watched, but the government is actually watching us, or quote-unquote, the man is actually watching us, um, keeping us at bay. Uh, it's taking place in a place called the Glen. The whole area is basically... You know, just some made up area, and everybody that's living there is mostly clones, especially like leaders of the neighborhood, like such as the pastors, such as the drug dealers, such as the uh, the pimps. You know, everybody who has uh, some type of leadership role or, 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 or can motivate or influence the masses. You know, uh, notice the girl, the, the host, she wasn't a clone, she was her real self. So, you know, they only made clones of specific people, you know, people of influence. So that's how they could, you know, get to, you know, doing the mind control with them and then making them get influenced others. So I think that was real eye opening right there. I guess they felt like a hoe is just going to be a hoe. Like that's just going to be a byproduct of whatever's going on in the neighborhood itself. And hoe and just the oldest profession that, that ever was, you know, from what they say. <laughs> so they gonna always be around. Now, my thing is, like, did the people that was never, like, like if they just built this whole Glen area and all this and all that, it, like, did, did the people who was the clones in the first place that got put into this area and the people who was never a clone in the first place, like, did they, like, how, how did they even coexist? Like, like, you didn't even go to school with these people. You didn't grow up with these people. Like, how did they even coexist? All those people who's not clones just so happen moved there. Like, that's that's one thing I would like to know. Um, What else? 
Uh, they did a whole lot of stereotypes in the movie, like every negative black stereotype you could think of. They had church, and a lot of people feel like church is, you know, something that, like, just religion itself is something that's, like, kind of holding us back, you know, because we're under someone else's religion. Uh, a lot of people feel like the chicken and all that, you know, that I, I kind of feel like that was the playoff of the whole Popeye's. <laughs> the whole Popeye's deal when the uh, spicy chickens came out, it just seemed like every fucking Popeye, the line was long and it was seemed like everybody was under hypnosis or something. Like just monkey see, monkey do. Uh, it made everybody laugh with the uh, chicken. The uh, the the church thing made everybody, you know, want to dance and all this and all that. Uh, they had the hair weave. Well, not the hair weave, but the relaxes with the perms and all that made everybody just relax, you know, calm down. Uh, what else? They had the, with the, uh, yeah, the Coke made you laugh. Not the Coke, but the, uh, the powder that they put up in the, um, the chicken, the chicken made you laugh. Um, and they had the music, you know, a lot of people feel like move, music that could really set you in a trance. And a lot of people feel like move, music that alone, it could just, you know, put people under hypnosis because it could influence you to do things you might not necessarily do. You know, that's why a lot, a lot of music is prohibited in other religions and all that, because it's like you worshiping uh, these celebrities and these musicians and, musicians and stuff, and it's like you under a spell. Hence, that's why they say the, you know, the devil is the angel of music. So it's like, you know, a lot of a lot of stereotypes that they put with the with the with the grape juice. Of course, it was grape juice. Of course, it was fried chicken, and of course, you know, everything dealing with hell. You know. So, you know, once they put this stuff in all these places, even the strip clubs, you know, that could just take over the black community, period. You know, they got your, your, your winos right out your, right, right outside your drug stores, right outside your corner stores. Um, and I feel like the clones... A lot, a lot of the clones were just there to just get experimented on, and then they had the uh, the uh, what you call it, the 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 word uh, Optimus Optimus Black or something like that. I ain't looking to what Optimus Black like why they specifically chose that 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 word, but I, I'm pretty sure it got some type of meaning behind it. You know, a lot of people feel like the whole Glen was like a whole nother playoff of Bikini Bottom because, you know, they in the back in the day, something that's tied in with Bikini Bottom was they was had nuclear test sites and they used to be nuking places and all that, like within these islands and stuff. And once they was finished, it, they was, they just went about their business. Like they ain't really care about your living situation after the after the cause. So that was a whole nother story in itself. I didn't hear people talk about about decoding these messages and stuff. Um, what's well, so else? Another decoding thing I didn't see. Uh, yeah, so the whole time I was wondering, like, damn, what the hell is Tyrone? Because we kept seeing Fontaine, Fontaine, and the whole time Tyrone, he finally came out at the end. Like the original first clone of Tyrone finally came out at the end, and he's in. He's set in California. So, you know, the old, the original Fontaine, he was real older. And instead of just, you know, wiping out his people, he wanted to just, you know, turn them all to white because, you know, I guess he felt like no matter what we do, you know, they're going to see us as not them. So we want to, we want them to see us, them to see us as them, you know, instead of, you got to assimilate instead of annihilate. So he wanted to us to assemble with them, I guess, um, crazy crazy theory you know they touched on uh police brutality with the uh with the with the little brother getting you know shot out there in the street by the police you know and that was that set up the whole agenda for cloning in the first place so they touched on that they touched on a lot of social issues you know a lot of social issues that we don't really speak on until it's put into a movie or a documentary because the music barely touch on these things so they mainly just got to speak to us through, through uh, movies and documentaries nowadays. Um, I felt like his whole plan and agenda, <laughs> that shit was motherfucking crazy just to side with them like that and just let the mind control your people. But it is what it is. You got to have a, a villain. Um, I, I figured the villain was going to be 
the uh, the bum from the store. That's what I feel. Who, who I felt like the villain was gonna be, and I felt like his little brother wasn't gonna be dead. I felt like his little brother was gonna actually be a clone too. So that was what two things I was wrong about. Um, I, I don't know if it's gonna be a sequel or not. It seemed like it's gonna be a sequel, and the sequel gonna be set in L.A. or Memphis because Fontaine went to Memphis. Or it might be set in, in L.A. in the original first clone Tyrone that. And see, that's another thing. Like, I think the clone Ty Tyrone, the original clone, was uh, based in um, uh, L.A. They put him in L.A. And then they, they well, yeah, the original clone. Then the second clone, they took him and put him in the Glen. That's what I think. So they could just, you know, have him doing all the same functions that he was doing in L.A. in the Glen. Well, you know, going to the corner store, then going, uh, asking his mama for, for food and stuff, and they put the little tape right there to make him think he's talking to his mama, but he ain't gonna never open that door, you know, until he finally just broke. So, that's dealing with the whole experiment right there. Now, one thing I didn't like about the movie, my only gripe about the movie, it was just so many just so happen moments. Like, it just so happened he could just sneak up into this place without no security. Like, you figure if they got all this going on underground in these tunnels and stuff and working on all this, you'll figure that they got something, you know, high, high secure. And that's another thing that I felt like it was kind of similar with us because in us, you know, all the, all the tethers or whatever was underground and all the clones was underground, you know, in both, both, uh, situations, everything was right up under people's noses. So, I think that's another play on too. Like everything is done right up under your nose and you ain't even going to go and acknowledge it because it's just kind of in plain sight, damn though. And even it, it got people talking, but you still not going to do nothing about it. Hence, and then they talk about uh, Tyrone. Like Tyrone, that's a stereotype in itself. Like I feel like after motherfucking uh, Erica Badu came out with the song, a lot of a lot of women stopped even naming their sons Tyrone. That was a popular name back in the 90s, but... In the early 2000s, shit, I guess a lot of women stopped naming their sons Tyrone. That kind of broke off that trend because it used to be Pookie, Ray Ray, and Tyrone. At the time, they trying to refer to, you know, just another black nigga, you know. <laughs> and that's what I think Tyrone, and I think that was the whole play. I was like, you just another black nigga. Just like in Get Out, well, the deal was on the ground. You you, you just another uh, ro road kill. You just road kill. So... Yeah, man, you gotta you gotta peep them type of playoffs that they doing. You know, you gotta you gotta peep all that type of shit that they got going on with the uh the code and the hit hitting messages. You know, and I heard that after after the movie went off, you know, you heard the Tyrone song, but I heard that they uh she even changed her song, you know, just for the movie. You know, so I probably have to look more into that. But I heard someone say that. Um, but I'm very curious to see if they're gonna do a sequel to this movie. I'm very curious. Like I would. I would like I would like a sequel to where the original Tyrone clone and Fontaine even meet up and then, you know, they trying to get together and, you know, take down shit up in Memphis or take down shit up in LA or whatever the case, you know, because I heard they got things all over the uh America. So I think Glenwood's like a whole experiment area, you know, maybe some shit that they're gonna gentrify sooner or later, but for right now they just running test experiments on these people on on these clones and just seeing how they interact with people that's not clones to, you know, just see what's going on. And another gripe I had with the movie was, like, how they gonna say he was dead and then they they, they could have easily just checked his pulse to see if he's not alive, but they still put him in a body bag. <laughs> like, it was just certain shit that was just, like, I think it could have been thought out a little bit more so it could win a little bit more realistic, but, you know, at the end of the day, the movie was just trying to have a, a storyline, a plot, and, you know, just kind of point 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 out that they're doing stuff you know just like with the goddamn the chicken like you know like all this gmo they got going on you know and, and even foods that you know lower testosterone like they really like they really trying to tell us something like they shit just changing you know <laughs> fuck even with the fucking uh like they, they even didn't change frogs i heard like they put pesticides and some shit that the and the frogs get a hold of and turn on the frogs gay so I think it's a lot of propaganda, a lot of agenda pushing going on. And lo and behold, it's going to get even worse in the next five to 10 years. So I'm really looking forward to a sequel. Let me know what y'all think down in the comment section below, though.